Well, uh, I'm known in Singapore as a DJ, uh, primarily first, and then I branched off into uh, writing about music as a music columnist, and I also ended up being a vocalist in a band, and eventually sort of like a singer as well. Uh, basically, those are my three so-called vocations uh, in life, but I also branched off making some um, naughty short films, uh, guerrilla style. Excuse me, you rebel me? Or are you just asking for it? Answer? Cannot be la, you just Singaporean only what? I come from a very conservative, traditional Chinese family. My grandmother uh, is a direct uh, immigrant from China to Singapore, uh, coming to Singapore. And so I'm like second generation uh, from, I think, the Guangzhou area. I was raised as a uh, Cantonese boy, uh, very sheltered, very protected, and um, I kind of rebelled against all that, you know. So for a long time, I felt that even though I know the upbringing, the, the, the values uh, uh, and all that, the ethics were very sound and good, but they were too, too strict, you know, and it didn't allow me to find myself. Also because I come from a, a broken family. Um, so uh, it, was, it was wonderful. Uh, it was a divine stroke of luck that I went into um, the English stream when I was put in the school. Although they, my parents actually wanted to put me in a Chinese school, somehow I ended up in an English school. Thank God. So imagine if there's no rock and roll in my life. Oh, I can't, I can't imagine that. So anyway, rock and roll was my redemption. Uh, through rock and roll, I found a way out of that strict upbringing and I found myself eventually, so to speak. I mean, there are a few I'm uh, really proud of. I mean, I'm really proud of Zircon Lounge and my second solo album. Because this album was like trying to prove myself as a solo singer that was more made for the record company and for the audience and this one was like after the first the record company had more trust in me and was like I could do what I want more or less with it you know so I'm proud of this I can read this all over again Singapore has been having a lot of uh, uh, China people coming here so because of that I got to actually know them, socialize with them, and became friends with them. So yeah, I've always rebelled against the whole Chinese way of thinking, lifestyle, whatever, whatever. And it's kind of odd that in the end, uh, I've gone back to this great love and affection for China. I speak Thai as well. You speak Thai? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Thailand has always been my spiritual home. Um, there's something about Thailand that's definitely mystical. I mean, there's so many things I can tell you about Thailand in relation to my life. It's, it's just amazing. It's as if I think I, I had an earlier life uh, there, for sure. Um, yeah. Well, I'm Buddhist, so I believe in reincarnation and, and other lives and all that. Yeah. But I'm also an open Buddhist. A what? I'm an open Buddhist. What do you mean? Uh, that means a free-thinking Buddhist. Uh, you put me in a church, you put me in a mosque, you put me in a temple, I will pray. To me, all religions are the same. It's just uh, whichever one that speaks to you should be your religion. Oh, sorry, oh. this is really reading. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Up to the funny part when Deborah Harry was pissed with Patty Smith and, and television. Lucy Fugus. Lucy Fugus is kind of like the album that the, the people who like Zircon Lounge were expecting. So after all this, then I finally came up with this and they kind of said that, you know, this was the album that we uh, as fans of Zircon Lounge was uh, open for uh, with a long progression, of course. It's much darker than, than that, of course. 
But all that said, I mean, one of the best songs I felt I, I wrote was on this one, Zircon Government Palm Stars, a song called Nag Nag Nag. Uh, it's a song that I feel is one of my best compositions, so it's kind of like all over the place, I guess. And then I'm really proud, of course, of uh, the, my reading of the Alfian Saad poem, Singapore, You're Not My Country, in this one particular CD. For me, I mean, that one track is worth the price of the whole CD. <laughs> yeah. I don't look Singaporean to a lot of people. Yeah, I recognize that I am completely uh, alien in that aspect, you know, because I'm like uh, an exotic species. You know? And uh, I, I dare say I have a very um, open kind of a personality. I'm kind of open to people. So um, when they get curious, I, I, I feel that I can you know, talk to them and all that, which is great, you know. I, I like people who are forward that way. I mean, like, in most other places anyway. I mean, I went to, for example, um, uh, 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 no, no, Sabah. I went to Sabah, and I found that people were really forthcoming and forthright as well. Um, like, I remember I came out of a, a, a mall one day, and there were these two skinheads there. And we looked at each other, and next thing, they just came up and spoke to me. And you'll never find that in Singapore. Never, never. Everyone is just so defensive. <laughs> like they have something to lose if they speak to you. Oh, it's above me. <laughs> we're like that also because we're a small country. And uh, like I said, basically, it's a rather repressed country. And because of that, with, with that kind of repression, you create that kind of uh, hostility in people if you ask me. I don't think they know even what happiness is, which is very sad. Because everything is so prescribed, you know, completely authoritarian lah. <laughs> um, people, especially if they can't find an avenue or a way out or, or any kind of channel, uh, they would resort to that kind of behavior. Now, I would bring you back to a simple lyric in a pop song, so to speak, that would explain it. <laughs> um, my favorite artist uh, in the whole world, Joni Mitchell, she has this lyric that says, and I can't find my goodness because I lost my heart. And basically that's how humans uh, function anyway. They will not show any goodness if they've lost their heart. And I would imagine that's pretty much the sad case la, here. You're a bad boy. <laughs> you make me say more than I want to. <laughs> bad boy. Anything for me? Try and get out of here alive. That would be the best. My dream would be to retire to Thailand be based out of there, and have the money to travel China, uh, see as much as I can, meet as many people as I can. Oh, now go. Did you think I'd crumble? Did you think I'd lay down and die? If living for myself is what I'm guilty of, go on and sentence me. I'll still be free. Because now it's my turn with no more room for lies. I will survive. The years have seen my life with someone else's eyes. I'm just trying to undo some damage that's been done. At least I know I've tried. I will survive. I will survive.